in the early first century, the Roman Empire was experiencing a period of unprotected stability and prosperity under the astute leadership of Emperor Augustus. This era, known as Pax Romana or Roman Peace, was characterized by relative peace and economic growth within the Empire's border. The Roman state had reached a zenith of power and influence, stretching its dominion across vast territories, encompassing much of the known world. However, the Roman appetite for expansions remained insated. It was during this period of imperial ambition that the Roman Gaze turned down Germania Magna, a vast and mysterious region to the north. Germania, as we now know it, included modern day Germany and the parts of surrounding territories. It was home to a patchwork of fiercely independent Germanic tribes, it with its own customs, languages and traditions. Romans, driven by a desire to consolidate control over the farthest reaches of their empire, set their sights on Germania. Their overarching goal was to incorporate this tract and untamed land into the ever-expanding tapestry of Roman civilizations. To achieve this, they envisioned the establishment of web of Roman provinces, complete with Roman laws, infrastructure, governments. This audacious and war represents a significant extension of Roman Imperium and a testament to their ambition to Romanize the known world. It is within this backdrop of Roman expansionism and imperial aspirations that the events leading up to the Battle of the Otburg Forest in year 9 unfolded. This pivotal battle, which saw the Roman legions face off against a collision of Germanic tribes, would have profound and enduring consequences for both Roman history and development of Germanic world. Publius Cunfilius Varus was no ordinary Roman general. He was sent picked by Emperor Augustus himself in year 7 to assume command over the newly established provinces of Germania. Visualize Varus as a seasoned leader entrusted with a mission to impose Roman order and civilization upon the untamed expanse of Germania. Unbeknownst to him, this appointment would thrust him into the herd of Milestone, where his decisions would carry profound and fateful consequence. Arminius, also known as Hermann, was a figure of remarkable complexity. As a Germanic chieftain, his background bore the traces of truly extraordinary history. What set him apart was not merely his role as a tribal leader, but his prior experiences as a Roman officer. Picture the inner turmoil he must have grappled with, torn between his ancestral roads and the education he had received in Roman world. Arminius harbored an intense and fervent desire for Germanic independence, a passion that burned with him. He recognized an opportunity to leverage his intimidate knowledge of Roman tactics to advance his cause. Ultimately, he would emerge as a driving force behind a coalition of Germanic tribes, uniting them in a fateful confrontation with the formidable Roman force. With his intimidate knowledge of Roman tactics and the local terrain, Arminius set a cunning trap. He lured Varus along with three formidable Roman legions deep into the ancient Teutoburg forest. It was a dense, unfamiliar wilderness, far removed from safety of Roman supply lines. Picture the tense atmosphere as Varus and his troops ventured further into the foreboding forest. Their confidence poet by the Roman mind, but unaware of the peril that lay ahead. The Teutoburg forest, a seemingly tranquil expanse in a heart of Germania Manga, would bear witness to one of the most pivotal and harrowing chapters in ancient history. Picture the Germanic warriors, their faces adorned with tribal markings that reflected their pride and heritage. They moved like raids through the temple shadows, blending seamlessly with the dense foliage of the forest. These Germanic warriors were no ordinary soldiers. They were masters of guerrilla warfare, ambushes, their speciality became their chosen strategy, as they preyed upon the unsuspecting Romans, striking with almost supernatural precision. They unleashed 
chaos up in the wound Roman legions, renewed throughout the ancient world for their discipline and order. However, the forest's labyrinthine complexity would prove to be a grave challenge for the Romans. Their strength lay in their organized formations, tested and perfected on the wide open plains of Europe. These formations, once a symbol of invincibility, now became their curse amidst the cradle trees and treacherous terrain of the Teutoburg forest. The forest, which had initially appeared banning, emerged as a malevolent adversary, hindering the Romans at every turn. The Romans, burned by their heavy armor, found themselves struggling to adapt to his unforgiving battlefield. What had once been their shield of protection now weighed them down, turning each step into a laborious effort. Amidst the tangled underbrush and dense foliage, the Roman shields became less effective, and their once immaculate ranks devolved into disarray. The cries of anguish and defiance from both sides echoed throughout the woods as they clashed. The Germanic warriors, driven by their unwavering determination to protect their homeland and assert their independence, unleashed relentless attacks. For the Romans, each ambush was like a sting of a whip, sapping their strength and resolve with each passing hour. The forest, which had once held an air of enchantment, had metamorphed into a nightmare. Its twisted branches seemed to reach out, grabbing the Roman standards and staring shields, enshrouding the battlefield into an erring silence. The Roman soldiers, once epitome of military discipline, found themselves battered, fatigued, and smeared with mud. This battle was no longer a simple contest of arms, but a grueling struggle against the very elements of nature itself. As day turned into nights, the forest appeared to close in around them. Inside a relentless embrace, choking off any glimmer of hope. The Romans, known throughout texts posted and heavily outnumbered, faced a relentless adversary that posed an intimate knowledge of the Teutoburg's every hidden passage and ambush point. It became a battle of attrition, where every step was test of willpower, every breath of testament to their unwavering determination. In the end, the Roman legion suffered a catastrophic defeat of monumental proportions. The Teutoburg forest, which had then concealed its perils with the appalling cunning, had proved to be an insurmountable adversary. The battlefield bore witness to the devastating cost of overconfidence and supremacy of guerrilla tactics combined with the intimate knowledge of terrain. The estimated death toll at the end of the battle ranged from 15,000 to 20,000 Roman soldiers. It was a chilling testament to the devastating power of strategy, terrain and determination. Those who survived faced a grim fate, taken captive by triumphant Germanic tribes. As prisoners of war, they were confronted with an uncertain future, far from the cohorts of Rome and civilization they had once known. The Battle of Teutoburg Forest would stand as a decisive turning point into Roman expansion efforts. Prior to this clash, the Romans had resulted in their ambitions to fully conquer and assimilate the vast territory of Germania into a sprawling empire. However, the defeat they suffered in a herd of Teutoburg Forest spelled the end of these grand designs. This battle had profound impact on a Roman military strategy. It was a sobering lesson in the perils of overextension and the dangers of underestimating the capabilities of indigenous force. In the wake of this catastrophic defeat, the Romans Revaluated re their approach to unfamiliar territories. Caution became the watchword of Roman military strategy, especially in the regions where terrain and tactics of local adversaries were not well understood. The Romans adopted more defensive stance in these unfamiliar lands, focusing on fortifications and maintaining secure supply line to avoid repeating the mistake that had led to their downfall into the forest.